Hello, everyone. I'm John from Craft Music, and I'm here today with the Keith McMillan Instruments K Mix. For a great deal on K Mix, please check out our bundles at craftmusic.com. K Mix is a fairly unique, multi purpose, multi talented kind of product. It's a standalone mixer, it's an audio interface, and it can be a mixer control surface. And to focus on just those first two aspects a little bit, there are uh, plenty of examples out there of small format analog mixers where they might um, tap into the signal chain somewhere right around the main outs and give you what's usually just a two-channel recording over USB option. And there are also examples of uh, sort of 1U or half-rack audio interfaces where there's some limited standalone mixer functionality, which is often uh, controlled with some sort of fiddly knobs on the front and a small screen or maybe something that you have to set up with a computer editor in advance. But there are interfaces that can function as standalone mixers. And then there's this growing category also of uh, much more expensive, higher channel count uh, digital mixers that can also um, function as audio interfaces. And even with all this historical hybridization and blurring of lines between mixer and audio interface, we're hard pressed to think of another example of uh, something with this channel count and in this price range that does as much as KMix does to serve both the mixer and the audio interface side of things. And as we'll see, KMix also brings along some extra bells and whistles that you might not find on uh, other hybrids as well. In terms of the hardware and the physical design, uh, K-Mix is small, it's lightweight, and it's all sealed up with no moving parts. So it's really easy to throw it into a backpack or a bag to take it with you without worrying about anything catching uh, or breaking. And no moving parts obviously means that there are no physical controls. So all adjustable parameters on K-Mix are handled either by these touch faders here or these rotaries up here. And we should talk about these a little bit um, because it would be understandable watching this video or just looking at a picture of K-Mix that you might have concerns about, you know, level of precision you can achieve or, or how accurate this is or how easy to use. So there's a few things we should talk about with regards to the touch controls. One is that um, they're actually very responsive. Uh, the physical sort of tactile feel of the of the faders and rotaries uh, seems to have been carefully considered. There are these handy lips on either end as well as a notch at unity so that you can really feel sort of where you are uh, in the throw of the fader. And um, very little pressure is needed to, to get these to, to move or to jump if you want them to. Um, and in case you're concerned about the precision that you can achieve with just the tip of your finger, first of all, in just the course mode that we're in here, um, it, it's not that hard, especially once you've worked with it for a little while, to be fairly precise in this mode. And then even better, there is for uh, all the faders and rotaries a fine-tuning mode, where um, if I put it into fine-tuning mode, it will treat the current value in course mode as the center and then let me make much smaller precision adjustments up or down from there. So as you can see, if I put one of these all the way up and then put it into fine tuning mode and take that all the way down, it has a fairly modest effect on the overall value here. So using this fine tuning mode and, and even hitting fairly precise values in course mode quickly becomes second nature. The touch sliders in combination with this shift modifier here also capably handle muting and soloing of channels. Um, and when we first got our hands on K-Mix and went to test this functionality, we originally thought that you had to be really precise and hit uh, the very top or bottom of a fader or even hit these little lips on the end here. It's actually much easier than that. Holding down shift and hitting anywhere on the bottom half of a fader will mute that channel and unmute it. And then doing the same thing with the top half will solo that channel. And as you can see, when I do that, these channel selector buttons here light up uh, showing red for a muted channel or yellow for a soloed channel. 
and blinking yellow for a channel that is both soloed and muted. One big advantage to using these touch controls instead of physical controls is that the same batch of faders and rotaries can perform different functions depending on which context you're in with the sliders handling not only channel levels, but also trim levels, send levels, gate thresholds, and more, and the rotaries uh, performing a number of functions relating to uh, EQ and uh, some effects and some other novel uses as well. So think about it also in terms of a mixer with all the capabilities of K-Mix with dedicated physical controls for every parameter would be enormous and expensive. And we'd like to do everything we can here to reassure you that using these touch controls doesn't mean giving up any kind of accuracy or precision versus physical controls. We've seen these internally lit touch controls that can also display values before on the Keith McMillan Cuneo. And much like the touch controls, these lights are a real boon for uh, display and control economy as well. As you can see, as I switch to different modes, the values immediately update, which avoids the whole uh, pickup versus pass-through versus scaled behavior conundrum that you get with multi-use physical controls. And there's also another great use of the lights as well, uh, in that K-Mix has what's called a VU mode, where with just the touch of a button, I can go from displaying the current values on all these channels to displaying the levels actually coming through them. The other big advantage to using touch controls with these digital value indicators is that K-Mix can store presets, uh, meaning that the entire state of the mixer, channel levels, send levels, effects and EQ settings, everything, can be stored into a preset and instantly recalled uh, with the press of a button here from one of 12 preset locations. So even though KMix does remember its last state uh, and restore its last state after being powered down and turned back on, having presets means that you can have um, multiple sets of settings to use in different applications, different rooms or venues, and so on. Rounding out the front panel controls, there are these mode buttons here for getting at different effects and processing control sets. There are some transport controls up here for when you're using K-Mix as a mix control surface. And then in addition to the shift fine tuning and VU buttons we've already mentioned over here, there's also a bypass button to bypass EQs and effects per channel. Looking at the back, we find eight balanced inputs and eight balanced outputs, with the first two inputs being TRS XLR combo jacks. These first two inputs can also provide 12 or 48 volt phantom power. All of the inputs use Keith McMillan's own in house micro pre preamps, and in addition to handling mic or line level sources, can also handle high Z instrument inputs and can even be configured as photo inputs to connect turntables, uh, which will then apply the standard RIA curve, the same as any stereo receiver or DJ mixer. We don't have the means here to precisely test and measure these preamps and compare them against others, but in our experience using K-Mix with a variety of input sources, we found the sound to be generally clean and accurate with low noise and plenty of gain. Also on the back panel are a couple of USB connectors, one for audio and one for MIDI control, either of which can power K-Mix either via bus power or with an included USB AC adapter. And then finally, on the front edge here, there's an eighth inch headphone out, which can also be configured to be another discrete out in addition to the eight quarter inch outs. K-Mix has three aux sends, which can be mono or stereo, and when used, those occupy the three output pairs here after the main outs, which is on one and two. And each send also has its own mode button here so that you can set uh, send levels for each channel as well as panning, and each send can also be configured to be pre or post fader. K-Mix has some powerful onboard DSP, which in addition to providing the EQ functions that you'd expect on a mixer, go a little bit above and beyond by also providing compression and reverb. 
Uh, EQ, compression, and reverb can all be applied individually to each of the eight input channels as well as to the main output bus. First up is the three band EQ, which has uh, boost and cut controls for each band as well as a frequency setting for each. And then there's also a separate control for the mid range to set how wide or narrow the bandwidth or Q is. Like we said, each channel has its own EQ settings as well as the master out. In reverb mode, the faders handle uh, send levels per channel, while the rotaries are set to control pre-delay, damping, diffusion, and decay. And then in compressor mode, the rotaries are set to control uh, threshold, ratio, release, and makeup gain. And then by holding shift, you can also get at the attack time here on the release rotary. Rounding out the mode buttons, there's a noise gate, which can be used as a utility to uh, gate out noise floor by setting a threshold under which the channel will be silent or can be used creatively uh, like to clean up a drum track. There's also a panning mode where you can set uh, panning for each of the eight channels on the main mix as well as for each of the three aux sends. There is a trim mode where you use each of the eight faders to control the input gain and then finally there's a phantom power mode where you can toggle phantom power on and off for the first two channels as well as toggling between 12 and 48 volt phantom power. And finally the headphone output gets its own mode button here where you can choose among the main mix or any of the three aux sends to monitor on headphones or any of the eight individual channels which whether you're using it uh, for headphones or as a separate output opens up lots of options for uh, setting up custom monitor mixes or for queuing individual channels before bringing them up in the main mix. Something we sort of glossed over uh, when we were talking about the panning mode here is that KMix can also mix in surround with uh, preset routing and output configurations for quadraphonic and eight channel uh, octophonic modes as well as 5.1 and 7.1. And while you can uh, mix and surround with various combinations of software and uh, multi-channel interfaces, KMix does way more of the setup for you with onboard crossover bass management uh, with dedicated uh, low frequency output via the headphone jack. And it's also worth pointing out that when you're in surround mode, the rotaries here turn into more like uh, circular surface controls allowing you to touch anywhere on the surface of the rotary to place sounds anywhere you want in the surround field. And that pretty much covers using K-Mix strictly as a standalone eight channel mixer. And as you can tell for its size and price, it's a pretty capable and flexible mixer. As I mentioned earlier, it's also an eight in 10 out USB audio interface with high end AKM ADCs and DACs and all of the processing and effects we just discussed can also be applied to signals you're recording into your computer. So you can use it uh, sort of as a traditional audio interface with uh, sources you plug into the inputs going straight into your computer for further mixing and processing. Or you can tap any of KMix's post-mix, post-processing outputs to be the inputs going into your audio software. Speaking of which, as we mentioned earlier, in addition to being a mixer and an audio interface, KMix can also act as a mix and transport control surface for your software uh, with easy MIDI mapping of its faders and rotaries and buttons to various functions on your digital audio workstation or your favorite plugin or what have you. And there are actually three banks of MIDI control available which can have different control CC assignments for each. So you could actually have set up and then toggle among controlling the mixer on your DAW or controls on your favorite plugin or whatever else you want to set it up to do. There are a couple of other things worth mentioning with regards to KMix and MIDI as well. Uh, the first is that if you're using it as a control surface, you're not limited to using it only with software or with devices that you can connect to over USB. 
Keith McMillan also offers a small box called the MIDI Expander, which can be used to connect KMIX to devices that have standard five pin DIN MIDI jacks on them. The other big footnote regarding MIDI is that MIDI on KMIX is not strictly a one-way street with uh, MIDI automation going from KMIX to other devices or software. KMIX actually exposes all of its settings and parameters to external MIDI control so that you can control or automate it using a hardware MIDI sequencer or MIDI automation in your recording software, which is pretty cool. Um, there is one caveat which is because there are so many parameters inside KMIX, uh, it would quickly exceed the CC allotment for a single MIDI channel. So KMIX sensibly uh, breaks its eight uh, channels into eight different MIDI channels, including all the parameters for an individual channel. And then there's an additional channel for the main bus and one more channel for some miscellaneous information. So this isn't the end of the world if you're uh, automating it from software, but might be something to think about if you're automating it from a hardware MIDI sequencer with a limited channel count. KMIX has a great free editor software available for Mac or PC. And in addition to exposing every parameter to on-screen control and managing presets, the editor software will also automatically check for and then apply KMIX firmware updates. There are also a handful of uh, under the hood functions and parameters that you can only get at from within the editor. Um, not that this is anything to be alarmed about, is it's a fairly short and carefully considered list of functions that you typically wouldn't need to get at on the fly or from the hardware. Uh, things like uh, speaker layout and bass management settings when you're mixing and surround, things like what MIDI C's get sent out for uh, different controls on KMIX, and actually one thing that we forgot to mention, which is the rumble filter. Each of the input channels on KMIX has its own dedicated rumble filter, which is a high-pass filter that can be used to filter out things like unwanted mic bumps or uh, nudging a turntable, and the rumble filters can be toggled on and off per channel, and you can also set their cutoff frequency from within the editor. So that's the KMIX, uh, quite a capable and powerful device, and we hope that this overview has maybe helped get some gears turning in terms of how you might be able to use it, but just in case, we thought we'd offer a handful of usage scenarios and applications. The first two actually came from Keith McMillan, uh, the inventor, not the company, and served as the impetus for KMIX development. Uh, Keith uh, spent some time touring with a string trio called Triometric and often found himself in uh, situations or in venues where there uh, was not great sound equipment or no dedicated sound person and often found himself wishing that he could control both front of house and stage sound from right where he was standing on stage. Keith also sometimes takes speaking engagements and similarly would often find himself uh, in a room with um, pretty basic sound equipment and again, no dedicated sound person where they couldn't accommodate even the most meager multimedia needs he might have for part of his presentation. So whether you're on either side of that equation, uh, you're a speaker or you're someone who hosts speakers, KMIX might be a great option to accommodate those extra needs. And along similar lines, if you're a bar or a tavern and you host karaoke nights or trivia nights, KMIX might be a great option there too, both in terms of its uh, power and capabilities and also in terms of its ruggedness and compact size. If you're a gigging keyboard player, uh, you've got maybe a couple boards and sound modules, some effects you like to run them through. Uh, K-Mix could be a great option for you to control your own little submix. And also, uh, K-Mix seems sort of tailor-made for the one or two person hardware live PA where you've got a, a bunch of machines and, and boxes and effects that you'd like to use uh, spread out on a table and could also be used by laptop performers, uh, whether they want to introduce a couple of hardware sources and effects into their performance, or just to have a robust, dedicated control surface for their software. 
Something else we thought of would be to pair KMix with uh, drum machines or other devices that have individual outputs, uh, like an 808 or a DRM-1 or a Tempest, as a way to tap and process individual sounds individually. So I, I don't know how often anybody's thinking about gigging out with an 808 these days, given their value, but if you were, Pairing it with KMix would be a great way to tap some of those individual outputs and make your live 808 sound like a recorded and processed 808. Just a thought. So once again, I'm John from Craft Music, and today we've been looking at the portable and powerful Keith McMillan Instruments KMix. We've got some cool KMix bundles, including one that gives you the MIDI expander. So for a great deal or to customize a bundle, please either contact your Kraft Music sales advisor or check us out online at craftmusic.com. Thanks for watching.